my name is Jared, also known as Grab360. And if you follow this conspiracy stuff, uh, New World Order, Secret Society, you know that they, these groups of people use a technique called the Hegelian Dialectic. And another word for the Hegelian Dialectic is called polarization. Now, polarization, it's it's linked, basically linked to a star that we have, a north star that we have called Polaris. And every, you know, every procession we have a new north star, and this one happens to be called Polaris. And the reason why it's called Polaris is because it's significant of a project that the controllers of the world had to begin to bring us down this to this goal that they wanted was which was a perfect slave and I want to show you uh, a tech I'm going to show you this technique how the media uses it the military uses it government uses it religion uses it but this one group of people I'll show you that use it is uh, the conglomerate media and I want to have a uh, a little bit of audio with me and somebody else called Glenn Keeley uh, thank you. The battle over what children should be taught in school has been raging for nearly a century now. The question is, is there room for compromise? Joining us to talk about it is Robert Boston of the Americans United for Separation of Church and State and Charmaine Yost of the Family Research Council. Appreciate both of you being with us. Robert, let me start with you. Polls show that nearly half the American public believes that people didn't evolve from lower life forms but were created in our present form by God. If so many people think that, shouldn't we at least be discussing in a science class? Well, I think we need to look really not at what polls show, but what the scientific evidence shows. We, we wouldn't want to teach something in the public schools that was factually incorrect simply because some people believed it was so. So we really have to look at the science. If you look at the scientific community, you don't see this great disparity in polls. You see most of the scientists backing the theory of evolution. Well, Charmaine, what about that? Why should a science class be forced to, to teach something which mainstream science says is simply not true? Well, you know, mainstream science throughout history has been challenged by questions. And that's how we make advances in science, is being open to all different perspectives. And that's all that we're calling for, is saying that, you know, have we gotten to a place in our culture where science has such an orthodoxy around Darwinian theory that we can't even question it, that we can't even look at some of the gaps in the theory and ask how can we do better and how can we answer some of these questions? That's all we're asking for is an openness of dialogue and looking at all of the research. Robert, President Bush has, has suggested that this theory of intelligent design should be taught in public school classrooms. The idea is that kids should be able to make up their own minds. They should get mm -hmm. different uh, points of view. Robert, w w what's wrong with that? I disagree. I, I think that there is a mechanism in science that allows for these views to be aired through peer-reviewed journals, and the intelligent design advocates well, sure. have not been able to publish any research that That's indicates their point of view. Let me finish, Charmaine. Uh, and one of the important things we need to remember, too, is that some of the ideas that groups would like to bring into our schools have been completely discredited. For example, the idea that the Earth is 10,000 years old and that dinosaurs and humans lived at the same time. Scientifically, that's untenable, yet that is what the creationists believe, and that is what, ultimately, I think, they'd like to bring into our classroom. Charmaine, right. I mean, do you, do you believe that dinosaurs walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? And, and if so, is that... The, the basis of, of w your argument. What we are looking at here is saying there are legitimate scientific questions on the table, and it is not true that um, that there is a complete cohesiveness among scientists. So we're really, really seeing an amazing censorship of anything that questions Darwinianism. And you see this kind of thing where immediately the minute you question Darwinianism, um, people like Rob come up and say, "Oh no, you're going to talk about God." Well, you know, I think our children. Um, have more robust intelligence and in, in questioning um, to be able to cope with looking at all the different theories that are out there. I think it's, it, it's uh, I just have to ask, what is he so scared of? Robert, do you believe this is really about uh, a debate about science or is it about a debate about religion? Of course it's about religion. And notice how she did not answer your question about the age of the earth and dinosaurs and humans coexisting. I would guess that if you took a survey of the members of the Family Research Council, you would find overwhelmingly they believe that the earth is six to 10,000 years old, 
that dinosaurs died because they were too big to fit on Noah's Ark or that they existed alongside human beings, other pseudoscientific ideas that have been debunked time and time hey, again. Hey, Rob, Why would we want to bring this into the classroom when there's absolutely no scientific evidence? Charmaine, answer the question. Yes or no? Trying, Age of the you Earth. Are you are trying to confuse the issue of conflating. Age of the Earth. Answer me, the question. I am trying How to answer the question. It? I'm trying to answer the question. How old you is it, Charmaine? I can't get a word in. That you're trying to conflate creationism with intelligent design. That's because I'm you want you want you creationism in the classroom. The answer I, the question. I didn't, Ten thousand years or six the billion. The only thing I have talked about is Why are you afraid design. to answer the question? Why are you afraid of the fact that ninety percent of the American people do believe in God? I know exactly what you want to do. You want to teach your book of Genesis as if it's some kind of literal scientific truth instead of maybe possibly metaphor or uh, uh, lots of other history. You want to bring it in as science. It's not going to fly. Do you want your children, Charmaine? Do you want your children? to expose to a, a belief which so the scientific community has disproven. I'm not saying that they've disproven all of this, but uh, in certain cases, I mean, some things sure. clearly have been dispro disproven. Things sure. which have been clearly scientifically disproven, do you still want them taught? Well, absolutely. That would that would come in in a history of science and a philosophy of science. That's why I'm saying there's different kinds of classes. So we're talking about kind of a broad array of things. Your kids need to know what opinions are out there, um, and 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 see what the evidence so, is. So so for Consider other so for other subjects in a science class that people disagree on, but that have been disproven, the kids should be taught those as well. Sure. So, they should, they, they, should, they should know that there are other people who disagree on, on just about every scientific issue. I'm not afraid of my kids knowing about any controversy that's out there as long as you put the evidence on the table and consider what what the debate is. That's what education is all about, is having a vigorous debate. Charmaine Yost, appreciate it, and, uh, and Robert Boston as well. Thank you. Discussion. Dar Darwin didn't grasp the most important part. And when the media discusses this, they don't allow the discussion on the most important part. Mm. If they're going to have a, a thing on TV, for example, they set up the media in the middle, mm. and on one side they put a person who believes in Darwin's evolution, mm. and on the other side they put a person who says they believe in creation 6,000 years ago which makes no sense. Yeah, I know that. That's so, yeah. so the media keeps the debate at that level in order to polarize the discussion between two teams. What the media should be doing is saying, hey, there's a third option. Mm -hmm. Added to the evolution is the fact that Neanderthalers took over at one place as intelligent designers, they took out eggs from the natural process and modified them and put them back in so that what you think is creation mm -hmm. is in fact modified evolution by Neanderthalers. But they don't discuss that in the media because their job is to hide that part. Their job is to polarize. Mm. They have to make two teams, Democrats, Republicans, mm -hmm. and they got to keep them even at some place around 47%, 48% each, mm. so that when an election comes around, they gather up money in the media from both sides, and then they decide who's going to win by instructing their people which are the secret societies of religion and, and the ones that came out of England in 1717, messages are given to those societies. This is the one you vote for. So as the uh, 5 or 6 or 7% of people who belong to these secret societies vote, so goes the election. Now, they, they can also, like they did this year with Barack Obama, mm -hmm. send the money through the Internet through these people in secret societies until he has double, triple, quadruple what the other side can collect mm -hmm. and is guaranteed to win. Because they're not spending the money, they're just giving it back to themselves. They own the media, so if they get priests, or uh, monks, mm -hmm. or masons, 
or anybody in secret societies to send in money, it's just going back into the same coffers that it came from in the first place. There's only one bank account. <laughs> yeah. It's The pyramid is the symbol for it. It comes to a point at the top. Everything shrinks until there's only one point. The reality is that the pyramid is double. There is one pointing downwards, and all the money goes down to the point at the bottom. 